Greetings, my neglected motion neighbors. I was just going to make this a quick announcement video, but then I thought better of it. Can't just upload a video for the first time in, what is it, 100 months without giving you a little something with it. Of course, if you don't give a fuck about the announcement and just want a little something right away, you can skip right ahead to about here. But for the rest of you, here we go. First of all, I'll be doing a so-called Q&A, a, a question-and-answers video for my 25,000 subscriber milestone. It seems that's what people do when they reach 25k, and I just want to be part of the cool gang. So, if you have any cues that you desperately want me to A for you, just drop them down in the comments or uh, on social medias. But that is not the big announcement. Remember when I used to do tutorials? Turns out I never actually stopped. Turns out I've just been working on the same ones since December. You might remember a questionnaire I did in July last year. What I tried to do with that questionnaire was just boost my skills as a tutoman. And it turns out people really love techniques and stuff. All the good Cinema 4D things. But they are thirsty for deeper no knowledge. Uh the really juicy stuff that's somehow a bit too juicy to be in any tutorials out there. Things like the creative process itself, how to have fresh ideas for projects, develop those into concepts, doing art direction, storyboards, animatics, you know, the actual design of the motion. And many things about working directly with clients as a motion designer, like reading and breaking down briefs, juggling feedback and getting approval while managing your time and your deadlines, the estimating, quoting, bidding, charging and contract part of it, as well as, of course, how to get the clients in the first place. Basically just, just, just all of it, for people looking to get really serious with professional motion design. How the whole workflow works on a major project from start to finish, from brief to delivery, from A to E. And guess what? I love that shit. That shit is my jam. So I'm gonna let you guess for a second what I've been turning down client work for these past 6 to 10 months. That's right, I have been working on a Cinema 4D plugin called El Beepo. It lets you make full everyday renders with just the click of one single button. But not really. I've been working on something teaching all of these things. It's a course for motion designers with technical skills that want to do legit work with legit clients. It's not quite ready yet, but after these months and months and months and months of work, it's finally at a stage where I can start revealing to the world that it exists, starting with all of you. If you want to keep up with how it's going, I'll post updates to all of my social medias. Plus, if you have any cues about the course, I can A those in the Q&A video. I'll also probably do a great big grand name reveal. Right, that was the announcement. You probably want your little something now, don't you? Fair enough. People have been asking me how to add these ripples to shit. So, I'll show you. So here we have the scene with our buddy Dave in, and this whole scene was generated by the plugin I mentioned earlier, El Beepo. And it is in beta mode, but it did analyze the whole everyday scene and figure out exactly which elements are required to have a very successful everyday. Now let's hide everything around Mr. Dave here. Don't need the stage, don't need the props, just need Dave. The thing you gotta understand about Dave is that he is a very high res kind of guy. He's got many polygons, about half a million of them. That's a bit too high res for me. It's not very easy to work with in real time, so I have created a better version of Dave for animating, which is a bit lower resolution. Only about 100,000 polygons. So we'll do the animation on low res Dave and then just drop our deformers and effectors onto high res Dave. Now the easiest way to make ripples on Dave would probably be the formula deformer. Let me just add that to him. And as you can see, he's very happy about the ripples on him. 
Basically, this does ripples by default. That's the default formula. It creates ripples. So if we were to move this to his shoulders, where I want the ripples to be, and rotate it so it's a little bit better uh, in the direction of the ripples, and then scale it down so it's a, it's a reasonable ripple size. You see that you've got ripples. Of course, the, um, the formula does uh, do it in reverse. So if I just change that here from plus T, which is time, to minus T, it goes the right way, the out way. And then I can just control this with a fall off, a spherical fall off in my test piece. And that works quite nicely. It's a good way to get some quick and infinite ripples on anything. Although it is quite slow to calculate for the computer, and it's also not very easy to control. So, the method I usually use involves, not a formula, delete that, but a regular old MoGraph plane effector. So I'm going to select Dave Low and just create a plane effector with shift held down. So now that's a child of David. Davidson, if you will. So let's move this into the right position first. I want the ripple on the shoulder and I want it to be close to the shoulder and I want it to be pointing outwards away from the shoulder. So kind of along the normal direction of the polygons. So that looks pretty good, but obviously it's not doing anything. So what we can do about that is change some settings. So what I will change is the deformer tab on the effector and change the deformation here from off to point or polygon. I'm going to go for point. And as you can see, we are pretty much already done. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. But not really. So I'm going to take this plane and change some more settings. This is the parameters fucking up. So I'm going to change the Y axis down to zero. We don't even want it working on the Y axis. What we want is the set axis. So if we turn that up from zero to one, two, three, you can see that he gets progressively grumpier and more buff as I increase this value. We can make him very grumpy and very buff, but I'm going to leave it at three because that's, that's the right level of grump and buff. Good ratio. So now we need to control this and effectors are controlled through fall off. So I'm going to create one of those, a spherical one. I'm going to scale it down slightly, make it about 50 by 50 by 50 centimeters. Turn the fall off percentage all the way up to 100%. So the main parameters that we're going to control this rippling of David with are all under the fall off. It is the fall off scale, which controls how far the ripples have gone. It is the offset, which we're going to get to in a minute. And it is also one of the main ones, the fall off spline. I use this one quite a lot, especially when I'm doing ripples. So if I start just drawing a zigzag shape here, you can start seeing what happens to David. Our buddy Dave here is starting to get what looks like ripples on his skin. And that is exactly what we want. I'm going to space these out a little bit and make them even, so ignore me while I fast forward this. So now we have this nice and even spline here, controlling a nice and even rippling. To animate this, you might think that we would use the scale. But the thing about using the scale is that when it becomes too small, it starts really crumpling up Mr. David here. We don't want to do that to poor David. He's been through a lot already. Instead, what we're going to use to animate this on is the offset. Because that's just going to start having it the right scale that we want and ripple from one point to the next. Of course, when it reaches uh, zero centimeters, uh, the ripples start going in reverse, which is not what we want. So let's just stay above zero. So I'm going to jump ahead to frame zero here and I'm going to move this so it's right off his shoulder at about 47 or 48 centimeters. Set a keyframe for that. Use the magic of Shift C to type in timeline and open up the timeline. Delete all the unwanted keyframes here from the X and the Z and just keep the Y. Jump ahead to frame 75. Create another keyframe by holding down Command or Control. And change that keyframe to zero. So now we have this little animation of the ripples slowly coming in on his shoulder. Close to what we want. Oh, and his cheek there as well. Uh, close to what we want, 
but a bit too slow. I'm going to select both of these keyframes, uncheck the auto tangents and convert those to linear. Now it's going to be an even speed throughout. And what's happening now is not very realistic. All the ripples are the same power. Usually the first ripple is the strongest, in nature at least, followed by weaker and weaker ripples as the forces die down a little bit. And we can fix that. That's also in our fall off spline. I'm just going to select all of these points and turn them down a little bit each and every one. Maybe this one down to 70. Next one, maybe down to 0.5. And this one down to maybe 0.3. Now we get a quite nice and natural slowing down and calming of the ripples. That's good, but I want the ripples to go all over David's body. And for that, I'm going to animate the scale parameter of the fall off. I'm going to start at 100% here at frame 25, set a keyframe, jump ahead all the way to the end, 100 frames in, and just add a full zero to that number. So now it's 1000% in scale. And if we play this through now, it starts on his shoulder, and then it starts spreading quite rapidly throughout his entire body. Pretty good, but I need to also change these keyframes a little bit. The end keyframe, it needs to be a linear one. And sometimes that button doesn't work, so I'm going to change these instead manually. And the first keyframe is also a little bit quick, so I'm going to change the left time from what it's at now, 18, up to 50. And that should do. Let's play that through again. And admire Mr. Dave, our friend and ally, in all his beauty as he is rippling. I mean, I quite like that. I think that's good enough. So that is the basics of making ripples. But before this is all over, I'm going to show you how to use the plane effector to make the ripples loop infinitely. First thing I'm going to do, make a copy. Don't want to lose this good ripple that we already have. And then pop open my timeline again. Delete all those keyframes on the copy. And also even out this spline. Make sure these are all all the way at the top. There we go. And then I'm going to scale this up to make sure it contains all of David's bust. And also set the offset to zero. So there we go. Now we've turned him into one really handsome fella. And if we play through now, nothing's gonna happen, but that can easily be fixed. Yo, I'm gonna let you finish, but for all the announcement skippers watching this, I'll be doing a Q&A when I reach 25,000 subs, so if you want to contribute some cues to that, just sling them down below and I'll give you some A's in that video. By this one single parameter, the spline animation speed. If I set that to 100%, it's going to go through this entire spline against the length of the falloff once every second. And you can see, Dave is enjoying it. But it's a little bit too quick, and that's also controlled by the value you enter in the animation speed. So if I set that to 50, it's going to take 2 seconds for this entire spline to cross through the fall off. And that's how you would make it loop infinitely. And if we turn back our environment on, those are all the elements we need for a pretty decent everyday. And we can just add that former that we like to our high res Dave. Sorry about that low res Dave, but nothing beats a high res Dave. And now when we play through, it's slower, but it's high res Dave. What can you do? So there you go. That's a little something about how to make a simple ripple in Cinema 4D. The only thing left now is for me to thank you for your time. And until next time, please keep your Daves rippling wonderfully. And as always, Stay in motion. <laughs>